On today's episode, I'm using Topaz Studio 2 as a Photoshop plugin. I'll show you how to draw your viewer's eye to the areas of the image that you really want them to look at using the excellent precision detail filter found in Topaz Studio 2. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I want to work with an often overlooked filter inside of Topaz Studio 2 and that's the Precision Detail Filter. Now I love it for adding detail to certain parts of my image in a localized way. In other words, not everywhere, but just in certain areas. The reason it gets the name Precision Detail because it breaks detail down into small areas of detail, medium and large areas of detail. And it also can break it down to overall tones, or just shadow tones, or just highlight tones. So that's where the name Precision comes from. I have two examples to show you today, this image and this image here. Now on both images, I'm gonna show you how to draw your viewer's eye to the area of your image that you really want them to focus on. And that's very important. We as editors have got to kind of like manipulate the viewer's eye to go where we want them to go, because we are controlling these edits. And we are crafting these images. And these are the little things that we can do to help them to see what we want them to see. This first image was shot at 67 millimeters at F8. Now the focal point is this tree right here, okay? So F8 gets this entire tree in focus. As you can see when I zoom in, it is in focus. This other tree behind it, it's a little bit out of focus, but it's pretty much in focus as well. But there's more focus on this tree. So what I want to do is add extra detail to this front tree here just to pull the viewer's eye in. And that way, this tree back here will tend to look not quite as sharp. And your eye will really be pulled like a magnet onto this tree. And that's what I'm using the precision detail filter to do. I went ahead and duplicated the background layer because I never want to take the background layer into a plug-in. I want to keep it intact. But I need this background layer as well because remember, I'll be putting a layer mask on here and locally applying that detail just to this tree right here. So I'm going to need that background layer to work in conjunction with the layer mask. Next stop, Topaz Studio 2. I'm coming up to filter and we're gonna launch Topaz Studio 2 and we will get started. Let me go ahead and grab the precision detail filter found right under the essential group right here. So we'll click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into the image so we can really see how much detail we're adding. Now remember, I'm only looking at this tree right here. I don't care what it looks like on the rest of the image. I'm only working with overall detail and I generally work with the overall detail like 90% of the time okay so I'm going to start with the overall small it's just looking for small areas of detail I'm going to pull this up and you can see I'm going to pull it up the whole way so you can really see how much detail it can add no I don't want to add that much detail I don't want to overdo it but I want to add a decent amount of it maybe right like that now here's overall medium detail so let's pull this up okay and again I'm only looking at this tree right in here okay so I'm going to bring that one to right about here. I think that looks good. Now the large areas of detail. Let's pull it up. Okay. I don't want to overdo it because these areas get really dark in here if you get too much. Like the shadow areas. Maybe right about there. I can still see detail here in these shadow areas. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on. And I think that looks good. I'm going to left click with my mouse and hold down. Here's my before and here's the after. But look at that detail that is popped. Now I'm going to zoom back out. Now that is a lot of detail. Okay. I'm, I'm going to even pull in even close here again. And there's even a sharpening here. You can add extra sharpness here if you want to. Let's add a little bit of sharpening. Yeah, maybe like that. That adds just a little bit of extra sharpening. So let's take a look. We have the before and the after. Again, it's overdone, but we don't care because we're going to locally add it here. So let's go ahead and click accept and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. Here's the before and here's the after. So let's add a layer mask to this. What kind of a layer mask do you think? A white or a black? Black, right? Because we want to hide the entire adjustment. So if you hold your option or alt key down and click this layer mask button, you'll add a black layer mask. Or if you have the TK8 panel, or the CX panel, you can click right here and add a black layer mask, okay? And now let's get ourselves a brush. We need to get a white paintbrush because remember, this layer mask is black. We need to reveal that detail, okay? So let's get a white brush 
and make sure I have a paintbrush here. I have a nice soft edge paintbrush. And what I want to do is make it not real big because what I want to do is come down on the edge of this tree right like this. I want to make sure I get the edge real well. If I overpaint, I can go and fix that with the opposite color. So let me just come down on this edge down in here, and then I'm going to come up on this edge on this tree and make sure I get that edge really well there. You can use object selection tools here if you want to, but I find for this type of a thing, a paintbrush is just fine. Now I'm going to make my brush a little larger and then just paint on the interior of the tree. But look at that detail in there. Really nice, and it's really simple to do. I'm going to even come down to these ferns down in here, but I'm going to cut the opacity down to about 50%. I'm going to put less emphasis on these, but I want to draw a little bit of emphasis on these ferns, and even right in this area right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and there's these little broken branches on the edge here. I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm going to go to 100%. I'm just typing the zero key to get to 100% and make my brush small and just paint these details on these sticks here because they're part of the tree as well even here and let me see on this i'll make this brush just slightly larger paint on here as well and you know take your time get it right i'm sure i'll overpaint and somebody will say hey dave you overpainted yeah i know it's a tutorial <laughs> if i'm doing this really you know if i'm not making a tutorial i'm going to make sure i get this perfect okay but take your time i'll make my brush a little bit smaller to come out on the tip here and did I miss anything? No, I think that's pretty good. Now, if I overpainted in these areas, switch to the opposite color paint. I'm going to type X. And I can come over here and just, you know, clean up any areas that I may have overshot. And that's important. These are the little things you really want to look for. Like, I think right here. I overshot that. Maybe right here and maybe right here. But you get the drift, right? Let's go ahead and make it full size now. So let's take a look. Here is the before, and here is the after. But see how your eye is drawn right to that tree? Now, I'm leaving this a little bit on the strong side so you can really see it, but I would probably take this opacity and just pull it back to maybe like 84%. Here's the before, and here's the after. So I don't want to overdo it, but I'm going to leave it up to 100% just so you can really see it there. But I'll go ahead and zoom in one more time. So you can really see here is the before and now here is the after. And there's no doubt that I really want my viewer to look at that tree. But that is what I mean by drawing your eye through the precision detail filter. Let's move on to the next image. And I have this orchid. I love this image. I shot it with a lens baby, uh, which gives me that real ethereal out of focus area out in here. I love this image for some reason. I love this orchid, but I just want to bring a little bit more detail here, okay? So let's go ahead and send this into Topaz Studio 2. I've already duplicated the background layer. Let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will get started. I'll go ahead and add the precision detail filter. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can really see this. Again, I'm just working with overall, so let's give it some overall small detail. I don't want to go too crazy here. Maybe somewhere right around there. How about a little bit of medium? That's way too much. Don't need a whole lot here. Just right about there. And do I even need large? Let me see. That's way too much. See how these areas get real dark in here if you overdo that large detail? You got to really be careful. I probably don't really need large. If you just double click detail, It'll reset it back. Or I think if you double click the little dot here, it'll set back. No, it won't. You have to double click detail to get that set back. Okay, so if I hold left click my mouse, here's the before and here's the after. So again, the before and the after. And it's added to the entire image. And I don't like what it's doing to the entire image. Here's the before and here's the after. All right. So let's go ahead and click accept. That sends us right back into Photoshop. And now let's add a black layer mask. I'm just going to use my TK CX action right here and click that and puts a black layer mask on there. Or again, you can hold the option or all key down and click on this uh, layer mask and it'll put a black mask on there as well. 
Now let me go ahead and zoom in here so we can really see what we're doing here. Now I need to paint with a white paintbrush, so I'm going to type the X key. I got a black swatch here that changes it to white. Now to get your default white and black color, all you need to do is type D. That gets you the default white and black swatches. And X just flips those around. So I'm going to make sure I have my brush. I'm using the shortcut of B to get my brush tool. Again, a nice feathered edge brush. I'm going to paint it 100% right on this area right here. Isn't that cool? Look at that detail that pops in there. Right up in here as well. Here to here. And now I'm going to drop that down to about, uh, I'm going to say 50%. And just paint this area right here. 50% in this area right around in here and here. And maybe up here I'm going to paint this at about like 30% because it is slightly out of focus. So I'm going to paint this at about 30% here. Okay, so let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. But isn't that nice? That detail just really pops. Now let me go ahead and zoom out so you can really see the image. So here it is without the precision detail. And here it is with. Now our eye is drawn right to that area that I want you to see. And again, I'd probably pull this back to about, oh, I'd say about 85%. Here's the before and here's the after. But look how nice that detail pops. Now, don't forget, you always have these opacity controls to pull this back. But a lot of times in videos, the YouTube uh, compression makes things that they don't look as quite as sharp as they actually are in real life. So that's why I overdo things at times. So I'm going to run this up to 100% just in case you don't see it. But again, here is the before and here's the after. But that's how you draw your viewer's eye into the areas that you want them to see. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give this a try. The precision detail filter found inside of Topaz Studio 2. I use it as a Photoshop plugin. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.